this is a regular meeting of the Development Review Board for the Town of Berlin. Uh, we have one application before us tonight. Uh, I'm going to start with introductions, however, since everybody's wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my far left is Tour Nelson. Uh, Polly, Polly, Polly. That's okay. Polly McMurtry. Polly McMurtry. <laughs> Good Lord. It's okay. It's a long day. <laughs> Our zoning administrator, uh, Tom Badowski. Tom Badowski. <laughs> Carla DeWeasel, uh, member of the board, and myself, uh, I'm Bob Bordick. I'm the chair of the board. Uh, if you all would introduce yourself, I'll start with you left, on the left, Bernie. Yeah, Bernie Chenette. Um, uh, representing the uh, Architectural Control Committee, or uh, Review uh, Control Committee, um, Parkers Farms Association. I'm Jane Bartram. I'm an abutter of the property being discussed. Uh, Marty Blagger said I'm an abutter as well. Yep. Meg Provost, I'm the Architectural Control Committee for Partridge Farm. I'm David Provost, the president of the Parkers Farms Association. Lewis Greats here on a, a, a butter of 69 point range. Okay, and okay. who do we have on? Trish winner this year, crew. Trish, yep. Hmm. So on the, there, I'm a little slow on that. So it's, uh, we've got Joel Baker here and myself. <laughs> And um, who goes myself? Yeah, I'm sorry, Trish Sawyer. I'm the realtor uh, working with Joel. Okay, thank you. And Joel's the property owner. I'll let him speak on his for himself. Hi, everybody. Oh, oh. Yeah, um, well, we're, we're, we're doing introductions right now. Oh. Okay, okay. No, no, we, nobody's been sworn in to speak yet. So, okay. all right, Catherine, can you introduce yourself? Catherine. Yeah. Catherine Lagerstead, property of butter at 99 Point Ridge Road. Kathleen, can you introduce yourself? This is Catherine Lagerstead, 99 Point Ridge Road. Yeah, we, we have two. Kathleen's my wife. <laughs> she doesn't. Oh. Kathleen. 69 Point Ridge. Okay. Kathleen McDonald. <clears throat> Okay, um, so uh, before I begin anything tonight, I want to swear everybody in and to give testimony, but I, I think before I do that, I'm going to ask, is anybody here requesting party status on this application? Uh, party status is required. Uh, if you want to, uh, you can testify, but you, if you want to appeal or be involved in the decision, you need to have party status. Uh, party status is awarded to a, a, a variety, I think there's five different categories. Um, uh, but, um, should I read them to you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Most common is in the butter. Most common is yeah, butter. But, but one of the most, yeah, most, one of the most common is a butters or um, you living in the immediate neighborhood. So that's the most common that people apply under. Um, so who wishes to have party status in this matter before the board tonight? Besides the applicant, obviously. No one? Okay. Uh, hey, Christy. Christy's our recording secretary. Uh, so, I'll st start by swearing everybody in that tends to give testimony before this board tonight. Please raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, nothing but truth in the matters before this board tonight under penalties of perjury. I do. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, so, we start uh, by asking the applicant to describe the nature of their application. Okay. Um, well, I bought this lot along with four others in the neighborhood back, I think in 1995. And the intent was to um, build or sell on these lots. And for whatever reason, I was a builder at the time, more or less retired at this point. 
but for whatever reason, I never got around to building any houses on these lots myself. So we sold four of them. And uh, some of them, I believe, were built on, some were not. Um, but we hung on to lot 35 for no particular reason. I mean, it was, in my case, it was kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing. Um, and um, it's kind of, it's, it's come back to the surface in this environment. You know, I'm older. I don't need it. I'm not going to build on it. I'd like to sell it. So um, that's what's motivated myself and Trish to kind of pursue this. So, you know, my belief when I bought it, it was a, a planned residential development or a planned unit development, whatever. I thought at that point that, you know, all the permitting was pretty much established. Um, nowhere was there any reference to this lot being any different than any other lot. Um, and so apparently we need a curb cut, which is fine. Um, so that's why we're here. Yeah, I, I actually, I, my apologies. I failed to uh, uh, really read what this application is that is before us tonight. And just, just so we know what we're looking at here tonight, is an application by Mr. Baker uh, for a request under section 3203B4B to reduce the spacing of a new curb cut uh, when it is not physically, feas physically feasible to achieve required spacing upon the applicant obtaining an access permit from the town. So this is he's actually asking for permission to reduce distance between curb cuts. And this between curb cuts is governed by our regulations, largely by um, uh, reference to um, uh, one of the state's standards for transportation, and that is, uh, I don't have it before me tonight, but B71, 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 which is now B71B. A. A. B71A. Uh, the bylaw speaks to B71, but it's now bylaw, it's B71A, which is residential drives. And that basically speaks to distance between curbs of, uh, in the case of uh, 100, uh, what is the speed limit on that road, do you know, Tom? 25. 25? You should know, sir. I should. So that's, uh, 150, that's 155, uh, uh, 155 feet between curb cuts is what's recommended by the uh, uh, B71A. Uh, so, um, and that's not directly, it actually makes reference to state's um, access management program guidelines, which you have to sort of read those to get why we're here. Yes, Tom. If, if I could, uh, Mr. Chair, add a little <clears throat> context to this discussion tonight. Please. Uh, 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 this, I spoke to um, Trish Sawyer early on in this process, and uh, my understanding back in 1995, the town of Berlin did not require curb cuts. Um, and these lots were developed without, in effect, seeking a curb cut permit. Hmm. The laws have changed over time. The town required curb cut permits. And, and that's why we're here now. That maybe answers uh, Mr. Baker's question. Uh, Mr. Baker's question. That's why I thought all the, the permitting was in hand when he bought the lot, but um, that's my understanding is that back then, curb cut permits were not required, but they are required today. And, and so uh, I, I spoke to uh, Ms. Sawyer and suggested that uh, because curb cut permits are issued by the Berlin Select Board, that uh, her most expedient way through the permitting process would, would be to to go visit the select board and request a curb cut. Uh, the, 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 the select board was um, notified in advance of our regulations and they said they really wanted the DRB to weigh in on it, on that. So they, they have put off their decision on the curb cut. My sense is, it's again my sense is that if, if, if the DRB would grant a, a waiver under under this section 
that the, the select board would likely grant a curb cut. The, um, I add one thing. Yes, go ahead, please, Mr. Um, Baker. As I understand it, uh, when a planned residential or planned unit development is put together, the intent is to um, intensify uh, the development patterns. In other words, um, get a higher density. And to that end, your standard dimensional regulations are, are not really considered. In other words, the setbacks are less, the, these lot sizes are less, everything is the intent is for everything to be a little bit condensed and you know there's it's a dead end road to a cul-de-sac and it's not a 50 mile an hour drive by thank you um uh yeah we we're talking here about a provision under the uh, uh commercial drives and 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 state uh, residential drives to say must be new curb cut. So um, applicant must locate a new curb cut so separated by existing approved curb cut, the same side, the road from any intersection as specified by B71, B71A. Um, except the Dolby be review board may, and you probably all have read this, uh, reduce the spacing the low volume roads reduce it if it's not physically possible to do otherwise. <clears throat> so, um, obviously, there's what's the right of way? You it's have 20, 20 foot width. 20 it's foot not width. a. It's not technically a right of way so much as just the dimension <clears throat> of the property. Dimension of the okay. Yep. Very good. Uh, questions by members of the board. <laughs> What is the distance? Yeah. What will the distance be? The distance would be, uh, Mr. Baker, what would the distance of the nearest driveway be? Well, I'm sorry, what was the question? What would the distance of the nearest driveway be from your driveway? Um, you know, I just have, I, I have the lot boundaries in front of me on a map, but I don't know exactly where the, where the um, driveways are located. I mean, there's a drive next to me or a lot next to me lot 44 the total width is 112 feet so obviously that's not going to be 155 feet from anywhere um the lot on the other side lot 33 the total width appears to be approximately 130 feet i mean all these lots are small. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well it appears that that the uh the driveway would be adjacent to the, to the one driveway. Yes, it would be a matter of feet. I would yeah, it would yeah. be, it'd, it'd be a matter of probably less than 20 feet. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. so, so this, yes, Polly. This lot was approved back in whenever the PUD was approved, the shape of the lot and all. Correct, in what, 1988? Yeah, okay. Um, other questions by board members? Uh, questions or comments by people who have asked to be involved tonight? Our Architectural Control Committee has uh, submitted a letter. Uh, I believe it's October 28th, which sort of describes the concerns that we have regarding development of this lot. Um, first of all, that, that uh, strip, the 20-foot strip, is, uh, is part of the lot. Um, within that 20 feet, there has to be underground power, water, and driveway. Um, and there is quite a cross slope on the, on the lower part of that uh, that we think will be a, an issue in terms of um, creating a, a reasonably level drive into the lot without encroaching on the neighbors on either side. Um, the primary concern though with this, this development of this lot is the wetlands and the, and the drainage, the stormwater drainage that uh, flows onto this lot. 
a good portion of the lot is wetlands. Um, there would have to be an expert brought in to actually look at that and delineate and t determine the limits of it. But from the from the obvious uh, cattails that we see and so forth, it appears that a good portion is uh, wetland. That wetland functions as a uh, mitigation factor for our stormwater. Um, coming down behind all of the homes above, there is a main drainage way that crosses the lot. There's also a drainage way from Point Ridge Road, which you can see on the uh, aerial photo that we're looking at, um, that has cattails in it. And that veers into the 20 feet near the, near the bottom of the, uh, the uh, 20 foot section there. Um, there's another drainage that comes off of the hill. So there's a confluence of three drainages on this lot, as well as the wetlands. So we would simply like to uh, request, as we said in our letter, that the board defer the, the uh, uh, waiver on this curb cut until these other issues are resolved. Um, a site plan is developed to scale, showing um, the limits of the wetland, the drainages, how the drive is actually going to be constructed without filling in wetlands, which we know is not permitted, um, and how uh, the, the owner intends to stay within the 20 feet that he has without encroaching on the neighbors to do cuts and fills and to make this, this drive work. Um, we have no problem with the decision on, we'll go with whatever, whatever the board says on, on the, uh, the curb cut itself, but that's sort of uh, a minor point in con compared to the environmental concerns we have in developing the law. Um, so I think that's, I think the letter kind of speaks for itself in that regard, so. I, I found your letter compelling uh, with one member of the board, but I, I have to tell you that that really has nothing to do with what the board is considering tonight. <coughs> The board is not considering whether this lot, that this lot should be developed or not be yeah. developed. The board is not considering, you know, uh, uh, complications and drainage. Uh, really, he's only saying this is between drives. And uh, uh, frankly, I, from my perspective, it kind of meets the standards laid out here that the board must find, uh, i.e., it. Uh, uh, Low Vine Road, uh, without even looking at that, it's the next standard, which is uh, not physically feasible. Uh, unless somebody has another alternative of how to do this, I don't see how it's physically feasible to access this lot without using this drive. It's just my opinion. Uh, uh, the board has not made a decision by any means, but uh, uh, just responding to those issues, just put things in perspective. Uh, you have not asked for party status, so. Right now, you're just speaking as a friend. Yeah. Well, ex I'll explain that. We, we don't have any intent uh, of, of uh, appealing of the decision of the board regarding the curb cut, okay? So that's why, you know, we, we, we don't need to uh, re request party status. Thank you. If I may ask, um, the authority of the uh, architectural Control Committee within the association, do the final development have to come to you for approval and do you have the authority as the ACC to withhold that approval? We believe we do. Okay. Yep. Um, and then, uh, Mr. Baker, what is the width of the proposed driveway? Well, your standard residential driveway is around 12 feet in width. I mean, it could be a tad, could possibly be 10 feet, but 10 to 12 feet is typical for, you know, a residential drive that services one home. Okay. And is there an existing culvert across the road right there? There is. There is? There's a cross culvert. Right. On Point Ridge Road. <clears throat> so that's something the select board is going to have to. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's a catch basin there. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's uh, just an open uh, culvert. It, all the all the flow from you know, one side of the of the road crosses right there, and joins the other side, and it all goes down onto this lot. Mm -hmm. 
I think a site visit would really help, but again, if your narrow focus is just the current I, I, I have to tell you, I think our, our focus is narrow. I, I think uh, the select board probably has more prerogative in granting a curb cut or not granting a curb cut or any conditions attached to it. But we're really dealing with distance between curb cuts. Uh, that's the only thing we're dealing with tonight. Um, and frankly, uh, again, you pointed out, or somebody just pointed out that, or Joe, Mr. Baker did, uh, that basically we're dealing with a, uh, a planned, universe, uh, planned unit development, which is designed to have compact development. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so uh, it's expected that driveways, like most, most of the lots don't have 155 feet in front of you. So, um, I'm not sure that 155 feet is an appropriate standard for a road this rural, but that's sort of a state standard. Is it correct to say that you're recommending to the select board that this curb cut if, if be granted the waiver, if that's your decision? We have made a decision here. We, we're, we're well, if, if that's your decision, it would be a, a recommendation to it would the select be, board. It would, be, uh, it would be approving the curb cut. Our action would be to approve or not approve. Well, curve cut. Prove the way, 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 yeah. 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 It, it uh, does not approve a curb cut. This board doesn't have. This, we don't right. approve curb cuts. Right. And that'd be, I guess, I don't want to say a concern, you know, for the applicant that don't misjudge this action. Um, as meaning, you know, yeah, any type of uh, prop I don't say preponderance, you know, that select board would have to follow. Um, it's just this very narrow focus that we're dealing with tonight. Um, you know, there are a lot of significant issues that the ACC has brought up, um, you know, which I think are going to be dealt with. It's just not within our control as this board <clears throat> to do. Really, the only thing we have is we have the ability to waive spacing. To waive that spacing, yeah. correct. And uh, that's what we're hearing. Is there any argument why we should not waive that spacing based on these criteria? I have a, just a point of clarification, please. What, so, excuse me, ma'am. Can you oh, state your name, please? Meg Provost. Thank you. So, um, uh, Meg, last name again? Provost. Oh, thank you. Sorry, didn't mean to yell. <laughs> well, no, that's hard. And, that, and the cameras are tough to pick up. I'm, I'm, laboring, with, I'm laboring with hearing aids that are being affected by masks. <laughs> so, so if if I'm looking at the uh, property for this lot, the, the the way the lot is designed, it goes between Mr. Lagerstadt's driveway and um, Mr. Greiser's, and in between there is a the culvert that Bernie was talking about that will run parallel with the driveway that he intends. So do I understand correctly that anywhere between Marty's property line and um, the culvert, Mr. Baker could put in his driveway? Is that is that how I'm understanding the curb cut? Um. He could not, could he or could he not consider that culvert to be part of his allotted space to put the curb, to put the driveway? It depends it's, it's on his property. Yeah, it depends where the property is. It's on his line. property. Is there a, is there a, I guess, I guess you're asking a legal question. Yeah. You're asking a legal question. Uh, does, does the association or someone have uh, permission from the property owner to have that culvert there. Now the culvert we're talking about is a cross culvert within the right of way, the yeah. town right of way uh -huh. on the road. Okay, uh -huh. nothing to do with the driveway. Uh, in all honesty, I don't think. Again, we're speculating on where a culvert is. I, I, I don't think we could even answer that question, Bernie. If there was a survey and could yeah. point to it, a, a definitive line. We, we can't answer that question. The, the, the applicant will have to ask, answer that question with any supplicant, supplicant uh, application to, to, the select the, board. to the select board. We, 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 this board cannot answer that question. We just can't. We're, just, we're just asked to de address spacing. Right. Spacing 155 feet. Can it be less than 155 feet for the next drive? That's really what we're being asked. 
there is there is an additional consideration that can be approved under the same bylaw, and that has to do with shared driveways. Mm -hmm. But that would require cooperation between property owners. <clears throat> uh, but shared driveways are a reasonable solution to a problem like this, uh, or a possible solution to a problem like this. But it, it really, it's, that's not within the purview of the <clears throat> DRB to insist on a shared driveway. Uh, if these were a new subdivision of some sort, we could insist on yeah. these driveways being shared. But these are two separate property owners. That's the next part of the same section. All right. Now, is there also a manhole mm -hmm. uh, on the Lagerstead property? It's in the right-of-way. No. Right it's, it's in the right-of-way? Right okay. It's in the right-of-way. Well, not right-of-way, but his property. Is that, yeah, a, is that a sewer manhole? Yes. Sewer, I believe. Sewer. So that's what I saw. In the, I, was, I was looking at Google Map, and mm -hmm. I saw this manhole. Is there anything? Uh, Tom, as far as spacing between the manhole and the driveway, or nothing would affect the uh, operation of manhole. No, nothing in our in our bylaws addressing that. So um, again, our bylaws are pretty straightforward, and what we're looking at is simply spacing um, of driveways. Uh, is there any additional testimony from neighbors of Ashton Street? I don't know the process. <coughs> Excuse me, Lewis, great sir. I'm a, a butter. They, so if you look at this aerial view, the the, the driveway. We'll hold it up so they can see what you're. Oh, you guys don't have that. Okay. They do, but so you could point at it and dis describe it. I mean, the distance between this orange <coughs> driveway and the, the Lagerstad driveway is is less than uh, eight feet, as far as I can tell. If it 155 feet, you're right, sounds like a lot, but what would be too little spacing between this driveway and another driveway? I mean, eight feet's not very much, right? No. Okay. I would say mine's five or six feet. From from the, your neighbor's driveway? Right. I'm at the end of the cul-de-sac there. It's not unusual. The, the, the very top? Not unusual yeah. this up yes, to have driveways that close. Yeah. Right, it's not unusual so there's anywhere no in this town to have driveways that close. Okay. As long as there's room for this snow, snow banks. Um, so. <laughs> Depends on the winter, right? Yeah. <coughs> Questions by board members? Comments? Tom, do you have any additional comments? No, sir. There's a lot of cars being sorted down now. Right? <laughs> A lot of guys no, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's my comment. That's uh, over. Um, Mr. Baker, do you have any additional comments you want to make? I would just suggest that the town of Berlin has been taxing me as though this was a viable house lot for the last uh, 25 years or so. So I've been kind of operating under that that uh, delusion. <laughs> Is there any additional testimony we want to offer? Hearing none, I would obtain a motion to close the hearing portion of this application. So moved. Second. Second. Motion has been made. Charles seconded by tour first. <laughs> <laughs> um, all those in favor of that motion, please sit by by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. So uh, this hearing is closed. We thank you all for attending. Thank you. Um, the board will probably go into a little recession now, so we're probably going to ask everybody to leave. In fact, I would entertain a motion to go into a little recession. Favor? All those in favor of the board of session, please see if I would say aye. Aye. Thank you. Good night.